Hey robot fans, welcome back to the channel. Today we're building Matt Hobbs' assassin droid. Look at him go. The SDK-4 Assassin is a spider-like separatist droid which can be seen wreaking havoc in Season 2, Episode 13 of The Clone Wars. Matt Hobbs found a very clever way to make this gigantic droid a bit more accessible to us droid builders. If you're at all involved in the droid building community, you're probably familiar with Matt Hobbs. He has an entire army of awesome droids, including his very famous Wally -E build, BB-8, Darth Porg, and many more. When I saw his assassin droids on Facebook, I thought this would be a really cool build, so I got in touch with Matt, and it turns out that this is a really easy, really fun build. It's mostly adding skins to an existing droid toy, the Mechamon Berserker. You can find a bunch of them on eBay. They have new ones, used ones, broken ones, depending on how much you want to pay. Um, I found a new one for 50 bucks, which really isn't that bad for kicking off a really cool project. So the toy came and I filmed this little unboxing, but I decided to spare you all of that. Upon arrival, the droid actually didn't quite work. The battery was totally flat, but I was able to revive it with my LiPo charger enough to play around with it. We're going to be swapping out that battery anyway, so it's no big deal. Uh, this droid's pretty cool. It's controlled by an app that's made by the toy manufacturer. It's got a free driving mode that you control with some joysticks and some pre-programmed animations, which are pretty cool. It has a few different walk modes, and uh, yeah, it's working the way it should, so let's start turning this thing into an assassin droid. So first things first, we gotta take this thing apart. I'm really impressed with the design of this droid. The legs are totally interchangeable so they can just unplug from the main body and we can put those aside for now. From that point, I basically just unscrew every screw I can see and now we can take a closer look at the guts of this toy. So here are all the pieces of that body of that droid and good thing is we don't need all of it, but we're gonna need some of it. So let's talk first about the electronics. Here's the main bit of the electronics that we're going to need to work with. Uh, this is the ba battery cavity. And you can see from the battery, two wires go into this board here. This is our power distribution board. Um, if you look, there's a yellow and black wire that go from the battery. And then I know this is out of focus, but there's a little thing right here that says six volts. And the six volts is what goes to our main board. The main board has our processor, our Bluetooth receiver, the four plugs that accept the legs and a whole bunch of circuitry. So this board at the very least among all the other things that are on this board is a six volt step down i'm hoping i can just replace this whole board with a much smaller six volt step down that'll power the main board i'm just not sure if cutting out all of this other circuitry will affect the performance of the droid because among other things there is a sleep mode switch right here that goes to the main board so i'm wondering if i cut out all of this if this is just going to be acting funny because it doesn't have the proper signals coming from this board but I'm going to try. I'm going to cut this board off. I'm going to try to power this thing with just six volts going in and see what happens. So that's the electronics. We'll see how that goes. Now let's talk about the structural components that we need to take from the existing toy. So this piece is very important. This is going to be the main base of the droid. This holds, this holds the main board in place properly. If you notice all the plugs for the legs need to be lined up so this is like the perfect little hub for everything and our 3d printed parts are going to fit right over this big piece of plastic here now we also want to keep part of the top not the whole thing because it's huge and it won't fit but if we put together if we really just put together these two halves as they were this is also a great way to secure the main electronics board. The board would screw onto here and here, and then these four legs attach it to this base. And in addition to holding everything nice and secure, it also ensures that these little leg plugs are perfectly in the right place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a saw or a bandsaw, and I'm going to cut out this little square bit, and then we can secure the droid, sorry, secure the board into the base of the droid. And then we'll figure out those electronics. So before I start making the cuts, I want to secure the two pieces together in the correct position. I screwed the original screws back in and took some glue to the seam. Now there isn't a lot of surface area here to glue, so I also just grabbed a scrap piece of plastic and kind of made a shim to hold the two pieces together. Then I used a bandsaw to cut out the shape and reassembled the droid with just the main board wired directly into my DC power supply running 6 volts. And when I plugged it in... 
Yeah, so this confirms my fear about all the necessary signals needing to come from that battery board. So I quickly resoldered that board back on, connected the JST connections between the boards, and... Haha, <laughs> yes, success! The droid booted up normally, and it even works as it should with the remote control, so I think we're in good shape here. Okay, on to the 3D printed parts. These files are available for purchase from Matt Hobbs' Etsy page. I will put a link in the description. There are four main structural parts. This round one fits over the main hub and then the legs kind of pressure fit it into place. So here you can see what the main cavity is gonna look like when that 3D printed part is on. We can put this other one on just to get an even better feel for the space that we're gonna to have to work with. This is what the wiring is going to look like. Here's the main board. Here's the battery board. My wiring turned into a bit of a, a bit of a junk show here because when I resoldered all that stuff back onto the battery board, I just put it into some Wago connectors. And lastly, for the battery, I just soldered an XT60 connector onto the main battery port because we are now going to be using this battery, which has an XT60 on it. And if we plug that in, you'll see that the droid boots up as it should. And we're good to go. So the next step is going to be getting all these parts painted black and then we can do kind of the final assembly here. The painting was super straightforward, just black spray paint on all of the 3D printed parts and each of the individual legs. I'll probably weather them later, but for now we can move on to the assembly. The first thing we're going to do is address all these little holes in the main piece. These are actually a bunch of little lens holders, 32 of them to be exact. Before I painted the main piece, I glued each of these 32 lens holders into place, and now we are going to finish that section off by inserting the lenses. I spoke with Matt Hobbs, and he used some resin printed lenses. I am currently without a resin printer, so I printed some FDM style press fit lenses. I'll make these files available on my GitHub. Then it was just a matter of pressing them into place. With the little lenses secured in place, we can move on to the big lenses. These are also an FDM style model I made to press fit into the holders, but these are going to have a little bonus attached. I'm going to glue a NeoPixel to the back of each of the four lenses to give the lighting scheme a little boost. I figure I can do a slow fade on these to give the droid a little extra life and animation. Wiring them inside the cavity is oh so fun, but I think in the end it'll be worth it. With that wiring done, we can move on to the lighting of the main cavity, which will consist of eight more NeoPixels, which may or may not also fade. I haven't really decided yet. After a quick test, we can see that the lighting is working. Yes, and now we can move on to gluing the pieces together for the final, final, final assembly. The gluing here is pretty intuitive. The top glues to the main piece and the big ring glues to the bottom piece. Now that the pieces are together, I can glue the inner dome lighting to the top. I just tried to arrange it so none of the lens holes were being blocked by any wires. Lastly, we just need a microcontroller for the NeoPixels. I had an old Pro Mini laying around that hadn't had any headers soldered onto it yet, so I went with that. But as it turns out, the 12 NeoPixels were a bit too much for the VCC pin of the Pro Mini. Oh yeah, this thing's just shutting down every couple seconds. Well, that sucks. So I also added in a little voltage step down to power the NeoPixels. Up and running now, we have a completed assassin droid.
This droid is super cool and was super easy to put together. You can probably do it on a spare weekend with the printing and the painting really the only things that are holding you up. A huge thanks to Matt Hobbs for helping me get this project off the ground and for making the files. If you're a fan of this channel, you may have noticed that I haven't been posting a whole lot over the past year or so, and you may also have noticed that I am in a new space. These two things are not unrelated. Yes, yes, I moved last year, and it has been a much slower process than I expected to get everything back up and running, but I feel like I'm getting there. I have a bunch of other little projects in the works, and with the release of the Obi-Wan trailer and seeing the Grand Inquisitor on the small screen, I definitely want to get back into that Saber project and get that fully working before the premiere if I could. Probably not, but maybe. So yeah, stay tuned, uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and hopefully I'll be posting more projects soon. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.